In this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Kang the Conqueror. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we're doing another key comic book spotlight, this time on Kang the Conqueror. Now, if you're new to my channel or this series, what I typically do with key comic book spotlight is take a notable superhero or supervillain and just point out five key and or grail comic books that the comic book collecting community often pursues when they're fans of this character. And in this one, we're doing Kang the Conqueror. Feels like everyone's talking about Kang these days. Everyone's excited about Kang. What we got going on with Loki feels like we're leading to Kang. So I thought it'd be kind of a cool time to do this video and talk about some awesome Kang books. But before I get into the books for today, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, and I would appreciate it. All right, that said, uh, let's get into my picks. And of course, you know, we got to start off uh, with Kang's first appearance, although that might be a little bit controversial if you guys want to argue uh, with, you know, who Kang is and all his other appearances. But for the sake of this video, we're sticking with this one. And this one is, of course, Avengers number eight, first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. Now, this is a book that has gotten absolutely uh, crazy hot uh, as of late because once it was announced that Jonathan Majors was coming to the MCU, uh, it was inferred that he was going to be playing Kang the Conqueror. It feels like Kang the Conqueror is the new big bad that we're building up to in the MCU uh, to sort of replace uh, this post Thanos era. And there you see Avengers number eight is the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. Of course, this book is written by Stan Lee and drawn by Jack Kirby. And what do you have to say about this? I mean, Kang the Conqueror, one of the all time great Avengers villains one of the all-time great Marvel villains. Uh, and I, I feel like, you know, comic book collectors in general have a great admiration for Kang. You know, that people people respect the character, love the character very much. But when we're talking about like sort of the wider audience, uh, I feel like Kang the Conqueror is just on the cusp of being sort of a household name. I, I think that once we start to get see Jonathan Majors in the MCU, uh, Kang Kang's, uh, you know, relevancy to pop culture, his his uh, notability within in terms of being like sort of an A-tier supervillain is absolutely going to skyrocket. And, uh, you know, for that reason, this is the one that uh, everyone is flocking to right now. Avengers number eight, Kang the Conqueror, the ultimate grail book when you want to get your hands on this character. Uh, and, and a very, very cool one because, you know, uh, Kang's one of those characters that has been in many Avengers books. So I feel like it's very, very fitting that he makes his, uh, you know, premiere, I, I guess you would call it, or, or his first appearance in this Avengers book right here. So Avengers number eight, first appearance appearance of Kang the Conqueror, that is my first pick. And as we dig into the numbers here, you will see that there is a 9.8 that sold on the census for $62,000, but that was back in November of 2015. You got to wonder what that would go for here today. And then at the bottom end, you know, a Go Collect has this listed around the $150, $200 range. But uh, because of the anticipation with uh, Kang, everyone knows that he's coming with the excitement of Loki. Uh, this is definitely an expensive book to get your hands on, even at the low end. I mean, when I go onto eBay, I'm seeing it being sold around the, you know, $300, $400 range or so. All right, let's go on now to my second pick. And my second pick, I'm actually going to uh, put a little bit of a caveat here because I'm actually doing three second picks. And what is the reason for that? Well, I got three books here because these are three first appearances of versions of Kang the Conqueror. We have Fantastic Four number 19, we have Avengers number 10, and we have Avengers Annual number two. And what is the significance of these three books? Well, Fantastic Four number 19 is the first appearance of Ramatut. Avengers number 10 is the first appearance of Immortus, and Avengers annual number two is the first appearance of the Scarlet Centurion. Now I know what you're thinking, Swaggle. What are you talking about? This is a key comic book spotlight for Kang the Conqueror. Well, Ramatut, Immortus, and the Scarlet Centurion are all Kang the Conqueror. Now, when we, I'm not going to try to explain to you guys, you know, the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey, crazy stuff that, uh, you know, Marvel's going to have to do a great job explaining as they roll out Kang the Conqueror here in the MCU. But uh, just suffice to say, Kang obviously is a time-traveling supervillain. He exists throughout different eras of time, and he has different iterations of his character himself, depending on, you know, when he lived. So, uh, Ramatut right here. This uh, would uh, be a lot of people's opinion that this is actually the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror because uh, in Kang's storyline, he lived in the uh, Egyptian times. He conquered that era. He was the Pharaoh Ramatut, and he actually made this his appearance in this book uh, before uh, the Avengers number eight. Although we the reader didn't know that Rama Tut was actually Kang at the time of this uh, book coming out. So uh, technically speaking, you know, people make the argument that Rama Tut, this is Kang's first appearance. 
we're not going to talk about that today, but uh, needless to say, this is still a great iteration of Ke- of Kang's character, known as Ramatut. He would he continues to play a storyline throughout uh, Marvel comic books, even after this one. And I have a feeling that when we see uh, Jonathan Majors in the MCU, I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, all the iterations that I'm about to talk about, Ramatut, Immortus, etc. Uh, perhaps you know Ramatut will make an appearance in the Moon Knight show if they want to do you know all the Egyptian lore, etc. All right, so that is Ramatut. But what about Immortus here? So in Avengers number 10, Immortus would make his first appearance. And who is Immortus? Well, Immortus is the future version of Kang. So uh, think of Ramatut as sort of like the older version of Kang. That was Kang, you know, living in the Egyptian periods. And then he would go on to become Kang, Prime Kang. And then in his future, in his distant future, he eventually turns into this Immortus character. And Immortus is a very interesting version of Kang because he kind of uh, has his hand in sort of being a hero. He's kind of a villain. Uh, he, he's really like self-serving ultimately is what he is, uh, but a, still a great iteration of Kang the Conqueror nonetheless. So uh, I definitely feel like that we will see Immortus play a role in the MCU as well. Uh, but in Avengers number 10, he would make his first appearance here and uh, go on to make many more appearances later on in Avengers comic books down the line. Now, Avengers number annual number two, this is kind of one of the lesser known versions of Kang the Conqueror. This is him known as the Scarlet Centurion. And he would actually, you know, be Nathaniel Richards. He'd take up this warrior mantle and have kind of this red suited armor. And that's a really interesting version of Kang the Conqueror, more of a warrior uh, cast one here. Uh, he would go back in time. You can see here from the cover in this particular storyline, he would go in, back in time. He'd take the old Avengers, put them against the new Avengers. So Kang was always up to these, you know, crazy antics. And I think that all these books here, Avengers Annual Number 2, Avenger, Avengers Number 10, and Fantastic 419 are all great books to own for the Kang the Conqueror character. In fact, it, it would be a mini goal of mine to get my hands on all these books. I'd love to own all the first appearances of versions of Kang the Conqueror. And let's quickly take a look at the numbers here. Fantastic Four, uh, number 19 here. There is a 9.6 that sold in the census around the $8,700 range back here in April. And then on the low end, again, another book, Go Collect has it listed at the $100 range. But this is one that, you know, because of the excitement with Kang, I've seen being sold at the $150, $200, $250 range on eBay. Same thing here with Immortus. There's a 9.8 that sold back in November of 2015, $18,000 range. And then down here at the uh, the bottom, you know, again, this is another book that is easily going around that three figure range around the hundred dollar mark. And then lastly, Avengers annual number two, we see a 9.8 going around that $4,200 range. And then down at the bottom, uh, lesser known of the versions of Kang books. I see this book going around that $40, $50 range or so on eBay. All right, let's go on now to my next pick here. My next pick is actually going to be another Avengers book right after number 10. This is Avengers number 11. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is actually the second appearance of Kang the Conqueror. Well, I guess, you you know, depending on how you want to talk about it, I mean, maybe Immortus is the second appearance of Kang the Conqueror. But regardless, this is the second appearance of Kang the Conqueror as the version that we know as Kang the Conqueror, the the kind of classic uh, uh, visual version of Kang the Conqueror. And why do I bring up this book? Well, you know, this is the one that I feel like uh, hasn't been as sort of specked on in a way, and one that I think is still a great, important book to talk about with Kang the Conqueror because it's an early Avengers book. Uh, and, you know, it, it has to do with the fact like, you know, we just saw Immortus debut in this previous Avengers run, and then they kind of dip into that. And this is kind of where they reveal that Immortus has ties to Kang the Conqueror. They, that's a part of the whole storyline. So this is a very cool book, in my opinion, as well, being that it's the second appearance of Kang. And it kind of goes to show, like, that it's, to me, this sort of represents, like, what Kang does, where he's always showing up in different time periods and different iterations of himself and always battling the Avengers in that, that kind of way. And that that's kind of what makes Kang so cool to me, is that, you know, you could fight Kang the Conqueror one day, and and then, you know, five minutes later after you beat him, he could show up again and be like, oh, I'm, I've, I've been practicing for a hundred years and now I'm back to like, uh, you know, fight you guys when you're at your weak, most weakened state. So very, very cool, uh, you know, uh, story-wise w- with what Kang the Conqueror can do here. So Avengers number 11, second appearance of Kang the Conqueror, very cool book. And also one thing that's also kind of really cool about this book is that this is the first time that you see Spider-Man teaming up with the Avengers, as you can see him there on the cover, co-starring Spider-Man, enough said. All right, let's go on now to my fourth pick here. My fourth pick is actually Avengers number 267. And what is the significance of this? Well, this is a storyline called The Kang Dynasty, written by Roger Stern back in the 80s. And this is one of the coolest 
Kang storylines to ever occur in Marvel comic books. I really, really enjoyed this read. And this is also a very cool book because this is the first appearance of the cross time council of Kangs. You know, uh, Kang obviously is a time traveling multiversal being. And uh, what ends up happening with his character is that, you know, he's, he's going off in split multiverses and he ends up creating uh, multiversal versions of himself. So Kang the Conqueror there's actually like, you know, countless numbers of him. There's thousands, there's millions of Kang the Conquerors that are all in different multiverses and they all team up. They all, they actually all meet each other in this area called Limbo where they have a council where there's like, you know, thousands of Kang the Conquerors and they all talk to each other and like, you know, plant, plot with each other and, and, and communicate. And this is a very cool storyline because you get that reveal in this comic book where Kang actually stumbles across, you know, into Limbo and he sees all these different, you know, Kang that exist and, and some of the Kangs kill each other because they think that, oh, you're, you're a weak version of ourselves. And so it's really, really crazy. But this is an awesome, awesome storyline, an awesome book to have, a great cover as well, great Copper Age uh, book. So one that I think is very, very cool to talk about uh, talk about here for a key comic book spotlight and one that, you know, uh, this was a book that like wasn't very expensive, you know, just some time ago and has heated up recently because of, you know, all the anticipation with Kang the Conqueror and one that I actually do feel like when we uh, see, continue to see Kang in the MCU, I do think that we're going to get a version of the uh, Council of Kangs and this is a very cool book for that reason and I won't spoil, uh, you know, what happens in the book and I won't talk about uh, where it all leads but, you know, all of this stuff is very, very important. Kang, Amortis, Rama etc. So uh, Avengers number 267, uh, my fourth pick here. And if we look at the numbers, there is a 9.8, you know, they're starting to sell around that, you know, pushing that $100 range or so. And then when I go into eBay, I see this one being sold around the, you know, 15, 20, $20 range or so. And, uh, but I would say, you know, if you're, if you're in your LCS, go check those bins and see if you can find it at a good deal, because this is a book uh, that uh, was uh, under the radar for a very long time. All right, let's go on now to my last pick. And my last pick is actually going to be Avengers Forever number three, written by Kurt Busiak in 1998. And why do I talk about this book? Well, it's my opinion that Avengers Forever is the absolute best Kang the Conqueror storyline in all of Marvel comic books. Now, uh, why do I specifically point out this issue? Is because I just think of the 12 issue run, this cover right here is the coolest one. This is, you see Kang going up against Amortis right there. And it's my suspicion that eventually in the MCU, we're gonna see this cover. We're gonna see an image like this with Kang going up against himself, Amortis, and that will make this book very significant at that time. But one of the reasons why I like the Avengers Forever storyline so much is, uh, you know, I won't go get too much into the, the, the plot details of it, but it really, really peels kind of like the layers back on Kang the Conqueror, kind of starts to look at him as a person. This is one of the first times uh, a storyline did that with Kang the Conqueror. And he kind of like fights alongside the Avengers in this uh, storyline. He's almost like a, a, a hero alongside of them going up against Amortis who wants to go after Rick Jones. And, uh, you know, there's all this crazy stuff with the timekeepers here. So, you know, one of the reasons why I want to point out this book is because I feel like Marvel is taking a lot of inspiration right now from this particular storyline with the timekeepers uh, leading up to Kang, leading up to Immortus. And this is why I think that this book is so, so cool. I don't want to talk about it too much. I don't want to spoil anything, but definitely a great read. And this uh, particular cover is an all-time classic in my humble opinion. So that is my fifth pick, Avengers Forever, number three. And as we dig into the numbers here, you'll see there are no CGC uh, slabs on this here on Go Collect on the Census because this is a very, very cheap book still. Uh, you can go on to eBay and find this one for you know two, three dollars or so. Uh, but before I wrap up the video here, I did want to mention an honorable mention. Now, maybe you guys are, are in the future and you already have your hands on this book. You guys are time traveling like Kang, Kang the Conqueror. But later on in the year, in August uh, of 2021, we are going to get a book here written by Colin Kelly. That is this one right here that you see, Kang the Conqueror. It is a five-issue limited series. And why did I want to mention this for the uh, key comic book spotlight? Well, surprisingly, this is actually the first time you are ever going going to see Kang the Conqueror on a title of a comic book. Yeah, that's pretty crazy to me, but uh, in, in all of the comic books we've ever seen, you know, all in, in Kang's historic uh, comic book history, he's actually never had uh, his own sort of limited series or own title series in any kind of way. Uh, makes sense, you know, supervillains, not all supervillains get it, but this one right here coming out later in August is going to be the first time that we see Kang the Conqueror in the title. And for that reason, I'm very excited to get my hands on this and read it when it comes out. 
Anyways, that is all I have for this video. Those are my five, seven, 20 picks for Kang the Conqueror, Key Comic Book Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know if there's other Kang the Conqueror books that you guys love. Uh, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.